Well, good morning. What a privilege it is for so many of us, hundreds of people in the same room, just to worship the Lord. I don't know about you, but I don't get to do this but once a week. So I'm excited to be here with you. Let's give God our praise this morning. Let's sing to Him. Come, let us worship our King. Come, let us bow at His feet. He has done great things. See what I see. And break every chain of oh God, you have done great things. We dance in your freedom, awaken a life. Oh Jesus, our Savior, your name lifted high. Oh God, you have done great things. Let's worship in this morning. in faith and I know you will do it again for your promises yes and amen you will do great things God you do great things oh hear who oh, heaven you conquer the grave you free every God and break every chain Let's lift our voice together. Hallelujah, God, above it all. Hallelujah, God, unshakable. Hallelujah, you have done great things. You've done great things. Oh, hear of hell, you conquered the grave. You free every captive and break every chain of oh
to remember that this morning, Lord, that you do great things you are doing and will always do great things. We love you. We thank you for your faithfulness. Looking just how far we've come Knowing that for every step You were with us Kneeling on this battleground Seeing just how much you've done Knowing every victory Was your power in us Stars and struggles on the way but with joy our hearts can say Yes, our hearts can sing Never once did we ever walk alone Never once did you leave us on our own You are faithful, God, you We've come knowing that for every step you were with us. Stars and struggles on the way, but with joy our hearts can say.
Cause your love never fails, never gives, never runs out on me. Come on, sing it. Your love never fails, it never gives, never runs out on me. Your love never fails, it never gives, it never runs out on me. Your love. Come on, let's lift up worship. Let's sing that together in worship. Your love. Your love never fails, it never gives, never runs out on me. Your love never fails, it never gives, never runs out on me. Your love never fails, it never gives, never runs out on me. Your love. God, we thank you. We thank you for your love. Come on, just keep singing that church. Your love never fails.
beautiful moment so I don't want to move past this just too quickly so let's all just close our eyes for just a minute you know when we worship the Lord obviously it's to bring him glory and praise but as as his sons and daughters we get a side benefit we get a chance to remember the qualities of our God amen so in this moment what we what I want to do is just make it personal for just one quick bit of time here if you're comfortable, let's raise our hands to the Lord. And in whatever way you're comfortable with, we just saying that God is good. But I want to ask you, who is God to you? Because friends, we all have a story of who God is to us. Heavenly Father, with our arms out and our hearts open, we just want to acknowledge, Lord God, what you've done in our lives and who you are to us on a personal level. Father, you have redeemed us with your love. That means you purchased us and you changed our lives. We were destined, Father God, for destruction. But your love invaded our lives, Father. You are our good shepherd, our strong tower, and our rock, Lord God. We listen to you, Lord God, because you give us life. You gave us your word and your spirit, Father. We are so thankful, Father God. We bring you all the praise and glory because, Lord, you've brought us through and you'll continue to bring us through. 
You will always bring us through. Your word says, Father, you won't leave us. You won't forsake us. You're with us through to the end, Father. We just love you, Father God. For each one of us, Lord, we just remember who you are to us. Thank you for anointing us for works of ministry, Lord God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father, for using us in our world to bless others. Thank you, Father. Thank you for your blessing to us that we might be a blessing to others. Receive our heart's cry and praise to you today. Lord God, you alone deserve it. Every bit of it, Jesus. We love you, Father God. Thank you for guiding the rest of our service, Lord. We're excited, Father, to open the word and grow in you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Yeah. He's worthy of praise. We got to remember it personally. Amen. Amen. Go ahead, have a seat. Good morning, everybody. Good morning in the room. Good morning online. It's really good to have everybody with us today. I'm excited about our service. I'm always excited about Sunday mornings. Amen. Uh, we're in a great series, Slaying the Giant. Pastor Chris is going to come up in just a couple minutes. Excited for that. Uh, but before we do a few bits of business, um, we got a couple of announcements for you. But before I give you those announcements, let's just prepare our hearts to give unto the Lord. Amen. Uh, if you've prepared yourselves to give, you're doing that because you know that God gives us every good and perfect gift, right? The Word teaches us it's better to give than to receive. doesn't make sense in the human mind sometimes, but the way God is is different, counterintuitive at times than the natural mind, amen? When we know who He is to us, we want to give. That's how we grow in Him. So thank you for your generous hearts. If you've prepared to give, you can give online. Very easy and convenient to do it that way. Also, in person, if you're here, we have some boxes in the back of the sanctuary on your way out. You can deposit your gift there. Uh, so a couple of announcements. You want to hear what they are? The first one is for the ladies. So ladies of the church, you're all welcome and invited to participate in the annual women's fall event in one month. So it's called On Holy Ground, November 12th. I want to encourage you to consider signing up as soon as you can for this event because it's going to be powerful. Can I explain a little bit about what's going to happen? We have special guests, Keely and Amber Hillier. Um, you might know them. So what happened in Keely's life is a testimony to God's faithfulness and goodness. It's an ongoing testimony. But in, in December 2021, she went into the hospital for what she thought would be one night dealing with a case of COVID. 115 days in the hospital, 55 days on a ventilator, and I understand one round trip to heaven and back. She's got a story to tell. Her and her daughter Amber are going to bless you ladies uh, mightily that morning. You're going to share in a luncheon as well, some worship. Uh, gals, it's a great time to come together and meet other ladies, build some relationships, and grow in your faith. So uh, registration is open. You can register online on our events page. You can also register in person in the lobby today. There's a table there for, uh, with the ladies helping to assign you up. So if you're interested, do that. I'm going to encourage you to do that. And other, one other quick announcement. We have a, a baby born in our church. We just want to let you know about uh, Harrison and Brianna Matika welcome their first daughter, their first child, Naomi Ruth, into their family on September 23rd. So I don't even think they're here today. I think they're online. So Harrison and Brianna, congratulations. They're brand new to our church. I'm so happy that Naomi's healthy. Everybody's happy. They've only been at our church a couple months. So we just wanted to love on them and congratulate them for that big day or that big news. We're really excited for their family. So looking forward to seeing Naomi in the near future. All right. Uh, okay, announcements for you on our video screen. I hope you can enjoy. Uh, plug into the church. I'm just going to encourage you. This time of the year, we're doing more events. So when you hear things that are happening, we want to let you know because it's great to get involved. Amen. Amen. Enjoy. Hi, CCC. I'm Darlene Green, and I'm here to share a few things for you to know today. Are you new to Community Christian Church? If so, we'd love to connect with you. The best way to do this is by filling out a connection card. It can be found on our website's homepage, cccsterling.org, or if you're here in person, you can fill out a connection card at the Next Steps desk in our lobby. While you're there, we encourage you to take advantage of our meet and greet moment following our service today with Pastor Dan Casey. 
he would love to meet you. He'll make sure you get a coffee, answer any questions you might have, and he might even show you around a bit. Just look for Pastor Dan near the Next Steps desk in the lobby following our service. Are you interested in serving at CCC but not sure how to get involved? Look no further than the Serve Board on our website. We would love to see you connect with a team and use your gifts to further the Kingdom of God. Check out the Serve Board at cccsterling.org serve to check out the current serving opportunities. Please submit the volunteer form and one of our ministry leaders will be in contact with you soon. We are so excited to bring back our annual Trunk or Treat on Saturday, October 29th. This event is for families with kids of all ages. From 2 to 6 p.m., we will have games, bounce houses, a petting zoo, pony rides, Yates Cider and Donuts, as well as tons of trunks ready to pass out candy to all of the kids. Feel free to get creative, dress up in a non-spooky costume, and show it off for everyone to see. Or consider decorating your trunk and being in our lineup for Trunk or Treat. We'll have prizes for the most creative costume and trunk. There is no pre-registration required to attend, but if you'd like to have your car in the lineup or you'd like to volunteer and help out, please sign up at cccsterling.org serve. Feel free to invite friends, neighbors, and family members to join us for a safe and fun afternoon with CCC. That's all of the announcements for this week. Make sure to stay connected with us online at cccsterling.org and on Facebook or Instagram using CCC Sterling. If you have any questions or need any kind of assistance, please visit our Next Steps desk in the lobby. Now please welcome Pastor Chris for the next message in our October series, Slaying the Giants. Good morning, everyone. It's great to be with you this morning. About 10 years ago, my wife and I decided to put a little home gym in our basement. And so we got just a little bench from the sporting goods store and a few different little pieces of equipment. And my wife also thought it might be a good idea to get a punching bag. That way, you know, I could get some cardio in because I got to have like a fun reason to do cardio. I'm not the guy who can just go for a run and enjoy that. I think that people who enjoy running, there's, I don't know, a little something going on there, but um, that's just not me. So she got a punching bag for me, and I grew up taking karate lessons, and I wanted to see if I maybe still had it. So we got this punching bag set up, and I'm down there, and I just, you know, I start jabbing this thing a little bit. I'm like, oh. Maybe still have it a little bit. I'm a little winded already, but I, I could get into this. And I'm jabbing it and jabbing it. And the next thing I know, I'm like punching it a little harder, a little harder. And as I kept punching this punching bag, all of a, sub, all of a sudden something inside of me just began to r- rise up. And I just started attacking this punching bag. I mean, I'm punching it with everything inside of me. And then all of a sudden, this anger started to rise up. And four-letter cuss words that I never say started coming to the forefront of my mind. I'm pretty sure I didn't say any out loud, so it doesn't count. But, but I'm hitting this bag, and the next thing I know, I'm on the ground weeping uncontrollably, like all of this anger, all of this rage, all of these emotions just came pouring out of me. And I'm like, honey, what did you do to this punching bag? (laughs) But obviously something was deep down inside. Now that was during a a rougher season of loss and pain for my wife and I. And if you were to ask me, I would have said, I'm not an angry person. Like I don't 
I, I didn't even know I had anger inside of me or rage or any of those emotions. I would have said, you know, I'm not angry. And that's what I think most of us would probably say, I'm, I'm not really angry. And then someone cuts you off on a freeway. What comes to the surface? I'm not a very angry person. And then someone really says something to you that maybe offends you. What comes to the surface? Maybe you start punching a punching bag and all the next thing you know, you're on the ground wondering what happened. Sometimes we've got to deal with these emotions like anger and rage. And it's not always easy to do. We're in a series called Slaying the Giants, and we're talking about some serious giants in our lives. And I get to talk about wrath or anger, rage. And I think it's ironic that I'm the one talking about this because this is something that I have a hard time with in life. In fact, I, I tend to hold on to things. The older I get, the better I'm getting at this. The more wisdom I'm having, the, war, the more the Lord is, you know, working on my heart. But it's something that I really have to be conscious of in my own life. And right now, there's a lot of reasons to be angry, right? You look around what's happening in the world, what's happening in our country, polar opposites when it comes to Republican, Democrat, everything that's going on with this nation, with the world, and I see a lot of people dealing with anger. On top of that, there's always someone, you know, that guy who you run into who's trying to tell you why everything is the way it is. You know, they absolutely know everything about everything. <laughs> they never keep an opinion to themselves. Their sources are always right. They know how to run the country. They know how to run the church. They know the most about the Bible, theology. I mean, they know how to raise kids and be married. I mean, they, they just know everything. And they can be critical and loud and opinionated. And I would say just about every extended family has one of these in their, in their family. And if you're saying, not my family, it's probably you. Just, just letting you know. Um, but we're dealing with that all the time, right? We, we have all of this going on in our world, but as followers of Christ, we're called to love the people that are hard to love. Ouch, it's hard sometimes. If you find yourself frustrated with, with what's going on in our world, in our nation, if you find yourself angry or frustrated, you're not alone. I'm going to tell you right now, it's easy to be angry and offended. But thankfully, the Word of God shows us how to deal with this. Thanks, Apostle Paul. We're going to read all about it this morning here in Ephesians 4, chapter 26. It's not the most fun passage of Scripture to read, but it still is pretty important. Ephesians 4, 26. In your anger, do not sin. Do not let the sun go down while you are still angry, and do not give the devil a foothold. Verse 29, do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouths, but only what is helpful for building others up according to their needs, that it may benefit those who listen. Verse 31, get rid of all bitterness, rage, and anger, brawling, and slander, along with every form of malice. Be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other just as in Christ, God forgave you. Lot to unpack there. The first verse, 26, we read, In your anger, do not sin. Do not let the sun go down while you're still angry, and do not give the devil a foothold. In your anger, do not sin implies you can be angry and not sin, which is good news for some of you in this room right now. That was a joke. It's okay. I was just kidding around. But chances are you might find yourself angry, whether you go online, on social media, 
There are posts, there are people saying things that might give you a little rage inside. When you go out to the store, when you are on the road, when you download any kind of news app or read a news story, there's probably something there that has the ability to anger you or offend you. But here's the thing. There's no positive in living offended. There's no positive to being offended. You know, I'm not happier or more joyful when I'm angry at someone or at something that's going on. My life isn't better when I'm angry at an injustice that's happening in our world. I've never had fruitful conversations when my heart is full of bitterness or animosity towards a person who has offended me. So our lives are not better when we're angry. Sometimes it feels like it should be, but it's not. And here's the thing, being offended in this world today is inevitable. Living offended is a choice. Being offended is inevitable. Living offended is a choice. We have to choose how we respond to an offense because you're going to get offended. Man, you might not leave this parking lot today without getting offended by something I say, something happening in the lobby, someone cutting you off when you're trying to leave the the church. But how we respond is our choice. If we hold on to anger, if we relive conversations and moments over and over in our mind, if we're constantly nurturing an offense, our lives are not going to be very enjoyable, one. And two, Paul said we give the enemy a foothold into our life. Now, that word foothold in the Greek means this, give the devil room in your heart. That's what we do when we hold on to anger or an offense. When Megan and I first got married, 21 years old, we had this cute little starter home. It was about 800 square feet, two bedroom, one bath house. And my new bride was so good at decorating this house, every room, it had a theme, and the house always smelled good with nice candles burning. And I was coming from living in an apartment in college with three guys, a one-bedroom apartment. So this was like a whole new experience, and it was amazing. It was wonderful. And she did such a great job with this little house. But we had one room that for months you did not want to go in because this house was small, and we just threw all our junk, all the things that we didn't know where to sort out into this one room. And literally, people would come over, and we'd show everyone the house, oh, what's what's this room? Oh, no, you don't want to, you don't want to see that room. (laughs) Literally, walking by that room, even with the door shut, raised our stress level. Walking into the room was like, oh my gosh, where do we even start? Where do we even begin? And so finally, one weekend, about three months into our marriage, we said, well, we're adults. No one's coming to bail us out. Well, they probably would if we called, but we got to do this ourselves. And so we went to Home Depot. We created a plan to organize this spare bedroom and to clean it out. So I went, we we got our containers, we built some shelving in our laundry room and in our garage, and we went in there, and within a weekend, we cleaned the whole thing out. And Megan made it smell nice and look good in there. And I can't tell you the weight that was lifted off of us being able to open the door to that room and be proud of it. But see, what happens is when we give the enemy room in our heart, it's always there. It doesn't always come out, but you can always kind of sense that something is not right. And it's amazing what happens in your soul when you get him out of the heart and you let go of anger and let go of an offense. 
it completely lifts like a mantle off of your shoulders. You see, I don't want my anger or my holding on to an offense to, to give the enemy access to my life, to my family. I don't want to do that. And sometimes I think we hold on to this anger and we feel like justified in it, but all we're doing is giving the enemy room to move in our lives. And when that happens, the enemy does two main things. The first thing he tries to do is he tries to divide. You see that happening all over the world right now. This is an attack of the enemy to divide Jesus said, a house divided against itself cannot stand, but the enemy loves to divide Christians, to divide people, to divide churches, and to divide families and friends. This is what he does. Spoke at, Megan and I spoke at a marriage conference last weekend, and a couple came up to us afterwards, and they literally said, He's on one side and she's on the other when it comes to politics, when it comes to like COVID and how everything kind of happened. They're complete opposite in their beliefs and it's literally divided their marriage. They're on the brink of not making it because the enemy has come in and tried to divide and have them angry at each other. And that's what he does. You see, when Christians, churches, Families and nations unite, they're unstoppable. But when they are divided, they're weak and ineffective. When we are divided as a church, as a people, as a nation, we are weak and ineffective. But when we are united, we're unstoppable. But the enemy, he knows how important it is to divide us. He also, the second thing he tries to do is distract us from our mission by throwing other things in the way that can maybe even seem to be good things. But it's used to distract us. What is our mission? Our mission is to show a dark world the love of Jesus Christ, the light of Jesus Christ. The good news that while we were sinners, Christ died for us. He redeems us of all of our past mistakes, puts his spirit in us. We get to live free with no guilt and no shame, and we can move forward in life and have eternal life with God. That's good news. That's our mission. But the enemy tries to distract us by getting us all angry and riled up over other things. He wants to get Christians mad and angry at the world, boycotting businesses and complaining and not watching Netflix shows and getting upset over other Christians not believing or being as passionate about them as these things and getting them fighting on social media over little things. He's trying to distract us from our mission. He wants to keep us mad, arguing, critical, judgmental, and self-righteous. And when he's got us there, we are ineffective for the kingdom of heaven. Not only that, but it pours fuel on a fire. You ever know you can fuel or diffuse a situation? I'll walk into a conversation and I'll hear people really hammering something home, angry, critical about something, and right there I have a choice. Do I jump in and fuel it? Yeah, you're right. I can't believe that happened in this. Or do I try to diffuse it? See, what's happening a lot is we're fueling it, and it's not just you who are getting angry. It's the people around you now. You're fueling an angry passion to your friends, to your kids, to your family members. And all of a sudden, we're getting angrier and angrier, more passionate and more divided and more distracted from what God's really called us to do. 
Don't get mad at me or be quiet. This is, this is Paul who said this, not me. It's, he's the one who wrote it. Ephesians 4.29 goes on to say, Don't let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouths, but only what is helpful for building others up according to their needs, that it may benefit those who listen. That's a tough verse to digest. Unwholesome includes, but is not limited to, belittling, bad-mouthing, criticizing, calling people idiots or worse, raising your voice, using extreme statements. That is what unwholesome talk is. And we justify it. Man, I can justify it all day because I can say, well, I, I have a righteous anger, okay? It's justified. It's righteous. These are injustices happening, so I'm allowed to be angry. However, when we use the term righteous anger, it's hard to know where to draw the line. And there's no other area, really, you can put the word righteous in front of it and then it becomes okay. Like, think about the giants we're slaying this month. Righteous envy. I just have some righteous envy going on in my life. It uh, doesn't really work there. I just have some righteous lust in my life. Mm, doesn't really, really go. I just have some righteous greed. You know, I just, I really want more stuff and more materialistic things in a righteous way. So righteous anger is a tricky word because what happens is when we're angry, we give the enemy a foothold and we're angry, we're not enjoying life. One thing that's really helped me with unwholesome talk, and I'm not perfect at this by any means. Any of my friends and family can tell you that, trust me. But what I desire to do is I desire to be known by what I'm for, not against. I think if us as a church and Christians were known by what we were for instead of against, it would do a lot more positive things in our world and in our society, and it, the unwholesome talk would kind of dissipate a little bit from that. Let's go on to verse 31. This is a, another tough one. Get rid of all bitterness, rage, and anger, brawling, and slander along with every form of malice. It doesn't say be arrogant about your moral superiority. It doesn't say be critical of everyone who thinks differently than you. It doesn't say be harsh when you're dealing with people who act like idiots. I wish it said this. <laughs> I really wish it did. In fact, there's a song on the radio right now that I heard, and it just cracked me up. And it probably shouldn't have, but I just thought it was funny. There's a song. Here's the lyrics. I want to just read it to you. It says, but nothing's getting through, so let me spell it out. A, B, C, D, E, forget you and your mom and your sister and your job and your broke down car and the things you call art. Forget you and your friends that I'll never see again. Everybody but your dog, you can all get lost. <laughs> Cracks me up. But isn't that how we are? It's like we're at the point now, it's like, I'm done. I've tried to be nice. I've tried to resolve this conflict. But you know what? A, B, C, D, E, forget you. I'm going to do me. But that's not. Is, is, as much as I would love, and I think this is hilarious, the much as I would love this, that's not what we're called to do. We're called to resolve conflict, be peacemakers in the world. And as much as that song might resonate with some of us in certain areas, it's not the right message for us to be living our lives by. Paul goes on to say in verse 32, be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other just as Christ, in Christ God forgave you. This verse gets me every time. Every time I read this verse, I'm immediately humbled, immediately. When I think of my 42 years of living on this planet and my offensive behavior in 42 years here, how many people, how many times 
I've offended someone. How many times I said hurtful things to family members, friends that I love, other people in my life. How many times I've done things I am super not proud of. How many times God has looked past my sin, looked past all of the shortcomings in my life and said, I'm still going to walk with you. How many times, undeservingly, have we received grace and forgiveness? And then Paul says, so be kind and compassionate to one another. Recognize that grace that you've received from God and from other kind-hearted people and give that out into the world. You see, we're human beings capable of being angry and offending people. You're a human being, very capable of being angry and offended. And we're also capable of angering others and offending other people. Happens all the time. It is impossible to avoid offense. But living offended is a choice. So what's our role? How do we control this in our own lives? How do we work through this? How do we know what our blind spots are? That's the thing about a blind spot. You can't see it. Other people can see it, but you can't see it. And we have that, and sometimes we don't even know we have it. I love David's attitude in the Psalms. This is what he says in Psalm 139, 23 through 24. He says this, Search me, God, and know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. See if there's any offensive way in me and lead me in the way of the everlasting. It's really easy to point out other people's blind spots. It's a lot harder to take a look at our own. Where am I angry? Where is my behavior offensive to other people? Search me, God. Know me. How can I let go of the things that I've been holding on to, like anger and offense? In closing, I just want to give you three quick practical ways to deal with your anger. If you find yourself angry or offensive and you hear this message and you say, I don't want to be angry or offended, but I just don't know how to let it go. Number one, go to God with it. Grab a journal. Right at the top of this journal, search my heart, God, and begin to write and see what comes out of your heart. I did this not too long ago. And I thought I would write like a half a page. Before I knew it, I read like 10 pages. See, there's so much in the basement we don't even know is there until we get it out. It's got to come out. If it stays in there, it's going to erupt out of you at the wrong moment. Dealing it with it in a healthy way is to write it out. God, search me, show it to me, and you'll be amazed at how he does. There's something about free writing that just your emotions, they just come up and you can let things go. Another way to deal with it is get some like exercise, working out, punching a punching bag. It's funny, but it works. I had a student in youth ministry one time And he was really upset with something his professor said in his college. So he did a presentation, and in his presentation, he pretty much called the professor out and told the professor everything that he said was wrong, and this is what's really true. I loved his passion, but he probably didn't do this the right way. His professor got very upset. And his professor said to him, Meet me in my office in two hours or I will fail you. So he met in the professor's office two hours later and the professor said, you're lucky I went for a run. (laughs) 
I got a lot of anger out in two hours and I realize you're young and I'm going to give you a second chance to do this presentation and do it a little differently. There's something that happens when we get it out. When it stays in, it's dangerous. It's like a fire in there. The third way is to get it out quickly. When the Bible says, don't let the sun go down on your anger, what it's saying is resolve anger and conflict quickly. Otherwise, it festers. And it gets bigger, and it gets bigger, and it gets harder, and it gets harder to let go of and to forgive. There's a term in conflict resolution called withdrawing. What happens so many times in conflict, people just withdraw. You have your fight to win people, but then you have your withdrawers. And what they do is they punish the other person by just not speaking to them for a while. I'm just going to withdraw. You'll know something's wrong, but I'm just going to stay over here. And when we withdraw, what happens is we don't deal with the conflict and it grows. There's nothing wrong with being assertive in your communication, saying, hey, you offended me by what you said. Hey, I want to get this right. Holding on to offense, holding on to our anger, it only gives the enemy a foothold. So those are your three practical steps to deal with anger. And let me tell you something. This message is a hard one to hear. I know it is. Trust me, the Lord has been dealing with me all week long on this. I'm like, I told my wife yesterday, I said, I don't even feel like I should get up here and speak this message because I need to put it into practice in my own life. It's a hard one, but it's necessary. Because here's the thing, every minute we're angry, we lose a moment of joy and peace in our lives. I'm at the point in my life where peace matters to me. Peace matters. When you lose your peace and you have bouts with anxiety or depression or anger and your peace is gone and you can't seem to find it no matter what you do, you learn to value peace. It is important. Don't let anger someone else's behavior rob you of your own peace. It's yours. Several years ago, my brother and I, we lived only 10 houses apart. And he was raising kids at the time. And uh, there were times where he would just come over unannounced. <laughs> and Megan and I, we love to wind down towards the end of the night around 7, 8 o'clock. We dim the lights. Everything gets dark. We kind of just, just like to set up the night for, for peace. And there were several times where I'd hear a knock on the door and I'd open it and it'd be my brother and he's got small kids running around. He's like, can I just, can I just hang out for 10 minutes? Can I just hang out for 10 minutes? I said, of course. And he'd come downstairs and he'd just look around. He'd be like, is it always this quiet and peaceful in here? <laughs> yeah. Before I know it, he'd be out on the couch. There's something about peace. Let's not let the enemy rob us of our peace. Let's not give him a foothold in our life to divide us, distract us, and rob us of the peace and joy in our lives. Let's make a choice to not live offended. Let's bow our heads for prayer. Father, I thank you that the only reason I can even speak a message like this is because of your grace and your love and your mercy in our lives, my life. I thank you, Lord, that you've never left me alone. You've never turned your back on me because of a poor choice or an offensive behavior. I thank you for that, Father. 
I thank you for rescuing us and giving us the strength to live a message like this out because in the flesh, there's no way we can do this. But in the spirit, Lord, your grace can empower us to do this. Thank you for forgiving us, cleansing us, putting your spirit in us, letting us know you, walking with you, giving us the ability to live out some hard messages in life. I pray for anyone struggling with anger or offense this morning, Lord, that you would lift it and you would restore to them peace and joy. In Jesus' name, amen. Looking just how far we've come Knowing that for every step You were with us Kneeling on this battleground Seeing just how much you've done Knowing every victory Was your power in us Scars and struggles on the way but with joy our hearts can say Yes, our hearts can say Never once did we ever walk alone Never once did you leave us on our own You are faithful Just how far we've come Knowing that for every step You were with us Scars and struggles on the way But with joy our hearts can say Yes, our hearts can sing
Father, for your faithfulness, that you are faithful in our lives. Even when we fall short, even when we get angry or offended, even when this message seems so hard to live out, you are faithful. And I thank you for your faithfulness in our lives, your grace in our lives that empowers us to live out messages like this. We love you. We give you this day in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you as you go. If anybody needs prayer, the prayer altars are open. There's a team down here that's willing to pray for you. God bless you. Have a great day.